So let's start with exploratory data analysis. So I told you that Python is a good language for scientific programming, also because Python is really fast to code in comparison to other languages like C. Even though Python is, is um, slower than C, developing in Python is much faster than C. And in scientific programming, what you're doing is a lot of nonlinear and exploratory code. So that's especially easy with Python because the syntax is so easy and with Python notebooks. And one of the things you want to do is exploratory data analysis. So looking at your data and finding statistically hopefully meaningful stuff. It's like we did in the first video where we saw that the displacement of a car apparently correlates with its horsepower. And doing so with matplotlib, for example, takes quite some time because, because you have to write pretty much code for one matplotlib graph. And there are libraries where that's much faster. And there's also this tool, Voyager. So in exploratory data analysis, you want to check, for example, if two variables of your data set correlate with, the, with each other, like um, the horsepower and the displacement did. And to do that, the best thing you can do is, for example, to make a pair plot, and um, which plots every variable, well, every numerical variable, against every other numerical variable, um, like we did here using Seaborn, uh, on the x and y axis, respectively, such that we see if so this here is a trend where if the one gets higher, the other gets higher too. Um, this here, for example, is no trend. So apparently, um, while the horsepower correlates with the displacement, the weight does not correlate with the acceleration. Okay, so plotting one variable on the x-axis and the other variable on the y-axis is a really nice thing for this. And there are also other ways of how to represent this variables in um, in code. So for example, we could so we could have the one on the x-axis and the other on the y-axis, but we could also, for example, especially for categorical data like the cylinder's name and origin are from our cast data set, we could, for example, if we have we could um, say that well different um, number of cylinders gets a different color or a different shape for the individual um, dots of our scatter plot. Okay, so let's look at our cast data set and we see where we have the name. So this is probably something unique for every single row, for every single car. So this is not something which is something statistically meaningful probably. Miles per gallon, cylinders, displacement. I kind of assume these correlates. So the more cylinders you have, the more, the more displacement you should have, and also the more horsepower you should have, and the less miles per gallon you're going to get, right? And probably there's also weak correlation to weight and to acceleration. And we can test, so right, the more cylinders you have, the higher your weight, that kind of makes sense, and the more displacement you have, the higher your weight, that also kind of makes sense. But the weight and acceleration, we saw already, they don't really correlate, so you can make heavy but fast, but fastly accelerating cars, but you also cannot. So to explore all of this stuff, uh, you want to make rapid plots. And I think that Voyager is a really nice tool for this. So there is a JupyterLab extension for, for Voyager. However, um, I upgraded to JupyterLab 2.0 for the debugger two weeks ago, a few weeks ago. And for, for JupyterLab 2.0, there's no support yet, but it will come eventually, so there's a new issue that will probably come. But we can also look at the data set here. Now this is, if I start Voyager, so I can also upload data sets somewhere here, I can explore sample data sets, so I can even upload them here. And then I have the fields, so these are the columns of my data set. And here I have categorical fields, this here is a timestamp, and I have numerical fields. Okay, and then I even have wildcards for any categorical field. No, never mind that for now. And now we can say which of the fields is supposed to be plotted how. So we can have, for example, um, acceleration on the x-axis. And now we see 
many so now we see the easy plot where acceleration is simply on the x-axis so and this is how we can explore our data we could um, change the plot such that this here is um, oh yeah we can for example bin acceleration and then take the count and this is so this is a view i specified by only having acceleration on the x-axis and then i um, the Voyager tool suggests me new plots. So, for example, hey, why don't you bin acceleration and then on the y-axis have the count such that you have this plot. And yeah, that's a good suggestion. So let me do this. Let me bin the acceleration and it automatically takes a number of bins here. And then on the y-axis have the count. How do I even do this? Oh. Ah, there's count. Now I have this plot. And then you suggest me more. Why don't you additionally color code the number of cylinders? Ah, oh, that's a good idea. Why don't I do this? I can, where do I specify this chart? And now I have this plot. So I see that where most of the cars I'm having, I have um, an acceleration of whatever these values here mean. And these have mostly four cylinders. Okay, let's explore some more. So for example, let's plot acceleration against displacement in a scatter plot. And we see, we've seen this already in Seaborn, so not too meaningful here. So let's plot something else. Let's plot um, horsepower against displacement. And we see, ah yeah, there's apparently a correlation. Now it suggests me even more. So it says, why don't you bin both and then take the count? Or why don't you take the mean of displacement to make this kind of plot? And I can also make much more. So for example, I can take the categorical cylinder variable and say, well, let the color code the number of cylinders. And I'm seeing here, so I have three, three dimensions in this one plot. So now I see um, well, that these correlate. And I see that generally the more cylinders a car has, well, the higher the displacement and the higher the horsepower. And we could additionally, for example, use the origin country, and we could say, for example, the shape here. And we see now that well, mostly US cars have this high number of cylinders and also high horsepower and high displacement. And that's a really neat tool. And then the suggestion even more, so why don't you take the mean of these and so on and so on. So I can really explore my data nicely and then I can export this using the Vega language and I can also just know, just um, well, use the knowledge I get here to create plots in other plotting libraries. This is just really quick uh, how to do it. I think once I bookmark them, I can export them somewhere. Or maybe, ah, there's export. Now this here is a Vega Lite specification of it. And I can import this Vega Lite specification using um, um, other languages that support this Vega Lite specification as Altair does. And we're gonna see that uh, later in the lecture. If I had the Voyager extension here, I could also right click on um, JSON files and open them with the Voyager 2 um, JupyterLab extension. And then I would look at this basically right inside Jupyter and can ex would have it easier to export and import. I could even export to an Altair graph, etc. So to the Altair source code of how to create that graph. Um, however, like I said, the tool is not available as extension right now. But still looking at it in this explorer, even here on the web page, is a really nice thing to interactively explore your data and to figure out, exploratively explore your data and to figure out stuff and meaningful values in the, in your data. All right.